Okay, uh, Eric's back with you. Um, today I'm going to uh, discuss how to modify uh, the Y sense contact sensor, the wireless sensor. Uh, this is a two-piece sensor. This is the magnet and this is the transmitter. Uh, this transmitter has a reed switch built inside of it that reacts to the magnet here. The magnet simply opens and closes the reed switch to make contact in there. Uh, which then in turn this sends the wireless signal to the bridge that's connected to one of the WISE cameras. Um, I have modified uh, several of these so that I can interface uh, this sensor uh, without the reed switch mounted in it uh, to things like my um, solar panel here uh, that I've got hooked up to my breadboard and a transistor here that uh, allows me to create a dust to dawn switch out of one of those. Here is the WISE sense sensor with the leads uh, connected. It has the reed switch removed and I simply connect a wire uh, so that I can utilize it to either connect to solar panel like I have here uh, or a phototransistor or you can even um, remotely install another reed switch at the end of the wires uh, so that you have um, more flexibility where you mount the transmitter uh, like I have out on my mailbox. Um, to modify these, uh, you modify those at your own risk. Be careful. Um, there are some fragile components inside here. Um, one of the items, which I'll show you here real quickly, is the uh, antenna itself in here is very fragile. I have actually taken one apart where the antenna is already broken off the circuit board. Uh, so I lightly shake this to, hear if, uh, to see if I can hear that antenna. This one sounds solid, whereas you can hear this one. And antennas already broke off. So uh, once again to modify these um, I'm going to let that be up to your own discretion. Uh, I'm just here to show you some tips on how I modified mine uh, for the five or six dollars they cost um, each. I guess uh, what I get four of them for $15.99 so about four dollars each. Uh, I'm not really too concerned about um, ruining one. Um, so first thing I do is I simply just put a screwdriver in there and snap the back off. And let's take a look inside. There's the back and there's the transmitter. You'll notice that there is a uh, large button battery here. Uh, simply just lightly pry up and remove that button battery like that. Um, components inside here. This is the antenna I was speaking about that is only connected to the circuit board in one spot and it's actually just connected to the contact that is uh, on the circuit board. It doesn't go through the circuit board for uh, good support so it's barely connected there. Uh, so be real cautious about moving that antenna around. It can break off the circuit board itself. Um, we have the battery contacts. Um, this side is the negative side. This is the positive. Um, I've even uh, had issues with this contact. After bouncing around the transmitter a little bit, it actually bends this contact down, and then I get a, um, a low battery warning on, the, uh, on that particular sensor. So usually what I do is I reach in here and I just lightly pry up on that contact to give a little bit more tension on the battery. Okay, the way the circuit board is connected in here, uh, there's a little plastic dot here. It's uh, been melted over uh, to retain the circuit board in the container here. So I've been fairly um, lucky if you want to say at uh, just simply putting my screwdriver under here and lightly prying up. And there it broke the top off that little plastic tab. So now the circuit board moves in here as you can see. So once you've broken it loose just simply lift the circuit board out of the base. Set that aside and I'll identify some things on the circuit board, the antennas I was speaking about. And if we turn it over, you can actually see the uh, reed switch is here. It's mounted between two soldered contacts on that circuit board. And that's the component we're going to be removing today. Um, as you can see, that uh, antenna is just barely tacked on there with a little bit of solder. Uh, but what usually happens is that pad on the circuit board actually gets broken off the circuit board itself 
and goes along with the antenna. So be very careful uh, about moving that antenna at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to lay this on a piece of foam so it's um, somewhat padded. Uh, hopefully you can see there. Um, then I'm going to take my uh, soldering iron here, grab it, and I'm going to give you some contrast and actually put it down here. Um, and all I'm going to do is uh, take the soldering iron and just barely melt that solder and push the reed switch off as I melt it. There, there's one side. Give you a close up of that. I've uh, desoldered the one corner of that reed switch. And now I'm going to do the same on the other side. And there, the reed switch has fallen off. It's that simple to remove the reed switch. Uh, there's the reed switch that uh, was installed on that, and now it's removed. So now what I'm going to do is connect a uh, pair of um, thin wires, about 20, maybe 22 gauge wire, which I had here, which fell to the floor. Here they are. Uh, this is the wire I'm going to use to attach to this circuit board now in place of the uh, reed switch. I have already tinned um, both sides of that wire. I'm going to trim them down just a little bit. They don't need to be that long. There we go. That's about the right size length of wire. Now on this circuit board itself there is a B plus and a negative. Uh, the B plus is the side that gets pulled down when the contacts are closed. Uh, the B plus side is on the, on the antenna side. Uh, the ground side uh, is down here at the bottom. So I've got a white stripe on uh, one of these wires, which is this one, and I'm going to put that on the B plus side so that I'm uh, that I know where uh, the B plus is, uh, because that's necessary when I'm using a transistor to turn this on and off with uh, which side is B plus. If um, if you're using just a micro switch or another reed switch, it doesn't really matter which side is plus or minus as long as the switch can make contact. So I'm going to hold this here right on top of the solder pad there and I'm just going to take my soldering iron and just barely tap it. You don't want to get the circuit board too hot. With a little heat there and it melted the solder, we're good there. I'm going to take my second lead here and I'm going to do the same. Hold it on the circuit board. Actually, I do this down here on the foam, so I can. Uh, I don't have a third hand here, so just touch it. Done, and it's on there. So we have now um, soldered our um, two conductor wire onto the circuit board. And I usually uh, just route the wires to the top side of the circuit board. The top side is where the uh, battery is mounted, uh, just in that manner. So now I'm going to modify the case so I have a hole in the case that I can uh, route those wires through. Um, such as on this one, you can see that I've drilled a hole in the case. Uh, the hole's a little on the large side, but it gives me room to work with when I'm working with this fragile circuit board. Um, I can always fill that hole in with a little bit of glue um, to keep it watertight. So I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to grab uh, the case. And there's the case that the circuit board fits in. Antennas at the top, batteries here at the bottom. Um, I usually drill my hole just um, below that notch there. And we'll go ahead and do that. something to hold it here while I drill and I simply just okay I've got a nice hole drilled uh, you could leave it at that and just feed your wires through that hole um, but I have found it uh, somewhat difficult uh, to get the circuit board in there with the wires 
in there so what I'm going to do is actually just physically uh, cut this into a notch with my side cuts just like that there we go we've got a nice little notch that leads us into that hole and now I'm just going to be able to simply put the circuit board back in without having to fish those wires uh, through that hole so here we go we're going to put the circuit board back in from where it came from uh, so I'm just going to be careful of the antenna once again and here we go it's going to go in and now I'm going to move my wires down into the notch like that and I should be able to just um, there it went just pushed on it snapped right in place so I believe oh, this one corner is up a little bit yet The circuit board is down. Yes, it is. Okay. So the circuit board's in place. Uh, all we have to do then is uh, simply put our battery back in. Like so. And then the cover. And there we go. We have modified one of the um, sensors. We've got a small hole there. We can fill in with... Um, some um, glue if we wish. Now we have both uh, these wires. We can either add the um, contact, uh, another one of the reed switches, uh, or we can um, use a transistor or photo transistor to turn this on and off with. So that's basic, uh, the basic way to modify uh, one of these sensors. Once again, uh, do it with care. Uh, do it at your own risk. Um, Take a look at my other two videos of where I explain what I'm doing with this project of the um, uh, photo transistor, coupling it to one of these um, um, landscape lights. Uh, I've got two different styles. I've got this one where I'm just using the solar panel that turns on and off this transistor. Um, I've since added a capacitor to reduce the amount of oscillation I have on that uh, went during low light levels. So with that, uh, any questions, uh, you're always welcome to comment. I'll be glad to answer them. Thanks, everyone.